Welcome to episode 43 of Regen Rovers. It's the start of season 6. So after two successive promotions, we are in the National League Premier, where we are expected to finish bottom. I'll just turn my face off so you can see properly. There we go, 400 to 1 to win the league. But last season, weren't we like 250 to 1 to win the National League South? Something like that. So I'm sure there's a lot of rich Regen Rovers fans out there that put a bet on us. You know, it makes sense. <laughs> it's, it's highly unlikely that we'll get promoted at our first attempt. There's some professional clubs at this level. There's some very good clubs at this level. So before I get on with today's video, let's have a fan corner. We haven't had one for a few episodes. Let's see what you guys thought about our promotion to the National League Premier. Hopefully some of you guys are relieved at the fact I have let some players go. The squad has been reduced. Uh, there, there's far fewer youth players now. I mean, all the under-18s can fit on one page. Before, I had to scroll for about a mile before we got to the bottom. So that's really good. I have updated the player spreadsheet to let you guys know the players that have left. I've also tweeted some... If you don't follow Region Rovers on Twitter, follow them because you miss out on some big news in pre-season. Let's focus on the transfers then. So the, the only player to actually move to another club, all the, all the other free transfers don't show here, but Jamie Courtney, brother of Callum Courtney, our, our backup right back last season, has moved to Whiteleaf. Now, we we sent him out on loan last season to Horsham YMCA, and I thought, oh, he'll come back and he'll be ready for the first team because he's actually quite a good defender. But then a, a, another team poached him, which is really annoying because he was on a non-contract. They could do that. But the players coming into team, the, the one that will stand out, Alec McCann is back. He's costing us 1K a month and also his wages. But I don't care because we needed a top quality striker in this league. If we hadn't signed him, we'd have actually had a worse team this season than last season, I think. So it was imperative that we either got our old friend Luke Mooney or Alec McCann. Luke Mooney rejected me, but Alec McCann has accepted another stay, another stint at Regen Rovers from Epsley. Of course, last season he broke the, the record, 34 goals in one season. He is going to be so important for us this year. But I'll go in chronological order for the rest of the players. First of all, Gareth Hancock, who technically is better than Marcus Higgins, who is, of course, our first choice right back, our captain. Marcus Higgins will be our first choice, but there is a chance that he might be dislodged by Gareth Hancock, who is two years younger, physically strong. There's some good mentals. Uh, like all my defenders, we need to improve the technical attributes. It's probably why they're playing at this level. But he was released by Swansea, and we picked him up on a free. Decent looking player. Welsh as well. We've got uh, he can be friends with Morgan Fawkes, who technically is English, but he's uh, changed his nationality to Welsh. Next up, Ian Donnelly, who was born in England but has declared for Northern Ireland. Now he left Stevenage on a free, and I thought we needed a better centre back. Uh, I wasn't overly impressed with Max Keane last year. So these are the four in the first team: Averson, our best centre back, solid, solid, like him. Ian Donnelly, who I've just shown you. Uh, of course, we've got Vince Boyle and we've got Max Keane. Looking, I think Ian Donnelly is a, a decent looking defender. Next up, a backup right back for Asini. So Samson Duro, Samson, nice name. And uh, hopefully adding a lot of strength to our back line, although he's only got eight on strength. But he is technically better than Asini at left back. But we we got to stick with Samuel Asini because technically he's a right back. He's in the word technically here a lot. Asini is a right back playing at left back. He's done a brilliant job there. Uh, it's his place. To, it's his place. You know, Duro has to do something impressive to, to take over from Asini. He was released by Charlton, and we picked him up on a free. Next up, backup goalkeeper. We need a we need a good backup for for Okoro. Galvin he's never never improved, and Charles Vincent apparently is uh, not that far off David Okoro's level. Twelve reflexes, ten handling, good aerial reach and jumping reach. Released by Watford, Charles Vincent. Cracking name. I love a player with a good name. Next up, Charlie Farrer. Now, we actually signed him, I think, the day before his 16th birthday. He's really young, released by Brighton. He's going, going to play in the under-23s, but actually, he's already at a decent level. He's not far off Paul McCann's level, actually, looking at this. But he's more of a pressing forward. Doesn't necessarily fit our system. 
But we'll see. We'll see how he gets on. I quite like the look of him because he's so young. He's only just turned 16. So, wonder for the future. Watch out for him. Of course, we've talked about Alec McCann. And lastly, another striker. I thought we needed a good sub striker to come off the bench. Morgan Fawkes isn't at it anymore. Josh Mann that didn't do much last season. Corey Hines probably isn't good enough for this level, let's be honest. There's a few other players in the under 23s I just don't think will be good enough. So I wanted a good backup striker. Elliot Averson, he could he could become first choice because he's he's good. He's pacey. Physically very good there. Uh, decent technicals, dribbling, finishing, first touch, free kicks as well. Always useful, determined. And uh, we've, got it. we've got him on loan from Telford who are in our division, actually. And we've got two Aversons. We've got two McCanns, we've got two Aversons. Bit confusing. Some other news is uh, Chef has decided to, to resign from his coaching role. He's still going to drive the coach, don't worry. He's still going to cook the food for the lads, but he wants to go back full-time at the Chesil Rectory, where he used to be head chef, of course, but he, he dropped down to being a regular chef to be a, be a coach for us. But yeah, he's decided to hang up his uh, coaching boots. He didn't have a coaching badge, and... If you watch the Revelations video, episode 10 of Revelations, you'll know that all our defenders' attributes were going down, and I kind of feel like it might be because of Chef. So we have signed a better defensive coach. Well, who is it? Josh Preston. He is actually not bad. 13 defending, good at working for Youngs. He's got a National B license, so he actually has some sort of coaching badge as well. Hopefully that will improve. He's only 20 as well. There's a bit of potential here with this coach. Of course, we only sign regen coaches as well. I've still got Ollie Oxborough as my assistant. I've kept with him. You know, he's not the best, but he's actually studying for a Continental A license. Born in Winchester, he knows the city. He knows, he knows a lot of the players. So I like Ollie Oxborough, and then he's got an alliterative name, which is always a bonus. Keep forgetting to show you this, actually. We've gone up to one star reputation. We've been half a star up until this point, but we're at last up to one star. The stadium capacity has decreased by 200. And the reason for that is we've had to increase the seating capacity to 500 to comply with National League standards as you can see here. So that is the reason why the overall capacity has de de decreased a little bit. Now, big news, I am on the favoured personnel list at last, along with Agu, Sammy Wassini, Alec McCann, who won, uh, obviously scored all those goals last season, Morgan Fawkes as well is on that list. I feel like we've lost a few of the, old, yeah, some of the old players from the parallel universe have now dropped off. Patrick Dibber and Danny Bice still on there. And of course those legends, Jack Young, Spencer Drury, Dr. Jones and Lisa Zellis. Marcus Higgins, our captain, right back, has moved to the icon list. The first player to do that. Impressive stuff. A first glance at pre-season, you think there's a lot of losses there, Paul. But we played some big teams to try and improve the finances. But that old trick doesn't seem to be working. Like, we got a lot of gate receipts, but the fees that we had to play for, pay for the teams kind of outweighed the money coming in all this money is disappearing and i don't know why and it's a bit annoying we're at so far in debt this is actually the worst debt we've ever been in so maybe jack young selling the club he thought he was selling it to some guys who had money yes they might have money but we're just not making a profit and he could say well maybe you're spending too much money on wages Paul. but they've given me all this money to spend regard i mean it's just stupid of them to do that really because we're not making enough money. But now we're in the National League. Hopefully we'll get bed bigger attendances. Maybe some more TV money. We might get further in the FA Cup. I don't think I need to worry about this too much at this stage. Because if we can somehow buy our way to the, the Football League, then hopefully everything will resolve itself. But it's not ideal. But you can see some big attendances. 4,800. That was a sellout crowd against West Ham, which which we did lose. But that Alec McCann scored. They played a good team as well. Declan Rice, Yarmolenko featured, as you can see there. Started things with a 1-1 one -one draw against Tottenham. This is a crazy game against Charlton. 5-7. Insane. We beat Team Solent 4-0. We lost 3-2 against Crystal Palace. We beat Oldsbury uh, United 7-1. 0-0 draw against Portsmouth. Really good results. So actually, decent results. But this is my most disappointing result. 3-2 defeat against our city rivals, Winchester City, who are now only one division below us. They seem to be getting promoted at the same rate as us. Uh, so they're just behind us. 2-1 uh, defeat against West Ham. And 6-1 win against Tower Hamlets. Just did an easy game at the end just to to build the confidence ahead of our first game in the National League Premier, which is against Maidenhead. I'm really looking forward to this season. It's going to be a lot of fun. Right, I'm hoping it's going to be a lot of fun. We might get mutilated. So today's question of the day for you to answer in at the comment section below. Two questions, actually. Firstly, where do you think we're going to finish this season? A lot. Of, I don't know if anyone predicted we'd finish first last season. 
I'll have to go back and check the comments. But yeah, where do you reckon we finish this season? Bear in mind, this is this is a level above. I think the sixth tier and seventh tier had similar teams. This tier, the National League, has a lot of really strong teams that are professional as well, paying a lot more money to their players than us. Second question, which of the new signings do you think will be most important? Other than Alec McCann, you know, he's obviously going to be good. But who? what other players or player do you think will be of benefit to this team? Let's just have a quick look at the comparison then before our first ever match in the fifth tier of English football. Average age, 20. Three years below the average for the National League. We've got an extremely young team. I've released Joe Colburn, who was our oldest player in the first team. Top earner, £525 a week for Rafael Godwin. Ten times that is Conor Mahoney for York City. That is the highest earner in the National League. Five Over five grand a week in the National League. That is insane. It really is. But, you know, we've got the most non-contracts at this level. All these players earning £0 a week unless they play. The average wage, £70 a week. Almost 10 times that is the average wage for the National League. That's the difference here. It is huge. And if we just quick have a quick look, I'll just turn my face off again so you can see the comparison for a few things. So looking at all positions, we've got the worst first touch in the league. Everything else here is below average. Looking at the goalkeepers, this is where we should be okay because Okoro and Vincent... I, I think they're good. We've got the best agility in the league. We've got three things above average. Everything else is below. We've got the worst command of area in the league, though. Defensively, worst marking, worst heading, worst tackling. I said technically we weren't great, and that is just proven by this here. Uh, we do have slightly above average jump in reach, but, yeah, it's not ideal. Midfielders, though, I mean, there's some decent things here. Passing, we've actually got the second best passing in the league, maybe we need to go. We've always played direct football, but perhaps short passing. My voice went really high then. Perhaps short passing is is an option here because vision-wise, eleventh best. It's not bad. I mean, we've got the worst long shots, which isn't ideal because long shots seem to be overpowered. But <laughs> if you haven't watched goal of the season video, make sure you go and watch it because there were so many bangers last season from our midfielders, despite the fact they have terrible long shots. Uh, finishing fifth best in the league, not bad, but we've got the worst long shots. Heading and acceleration in the league. Pace is a little bit below average. We might have to adapt our style of play this season. It's worked wonders, hasn't it, previously, but maybe it's uh, it's not going to work at this level. We've got second best determination in the league. So we've got some players determined with potential, I suppose, uh, and everything else. I mean, there's so many things here to look at, but we've got a lot of bad things. I'm a, I'm a tad nervous, but I'm mainly excited. I'm nervous because I feel like we may have got promoted a bit too early and it might come crashing down this season after two extremely successful seasons. You've got that that hope, you've got that expectation now that we're going to score goals and excite the fans, but I'm worried. I think Alec McCann is definitely good enough for this level, but everyone else, I'm not sure. I think Okoro is. His, his current ability, stars-wise, isn't actually that good, but, oh no, a few things are going down. What's happening? They were all going up before. What's happening, Okoro? Don't do not do this to me. You're 21 now. You're reaching that age where, you know, I'm expecting you to be... <laughs> Apparently he's a backup player but could still improve. No, he's amazing as David Okoro. We love him. He finished second in the Twitter Player of the Season award. Alec McCann won that last season, so I'm so pleased I managed to get him back. It's annoying that Luke Mooney keeps rejecting me, but we don't need him with Alec McCann. So I've not actually changed the team apart from Donnelly coming into the back line. The bench is quite different. We've got Charles Vincent there, we've got Duru, and we've got Elliot Avison with Sean Walker and Perry Miles. But, you know, Donnelly is the only player that slots into this first team ahead of Max Keane. A nice easy journey for Maidenhead United. Today then down to Plumbing Park, a refurbished Plumbing Park, lots of new seats. Exciting times. This is the first season that can actually assign shirt numbers as well. Number 10 for Alec McCann, of course, because of his incredible performances last season. We only just signed him like a couple games before the start of the season, actually. I was worried we wouldn't, we'd have to line up with Morgan Forks up front. I'd have probably played Corey Hines, to be fair. But yeah, we're playing in our green third shirt today. Of course, you can still buy these shirts, remember? All the links in the description below. I've got nothing to lose. That's what I've gone for. I have faith in the attack. I have faith in the defence. Oh, I'm excited for our first ever game in the National League. Fifth tier of English football. We're one step away 
from the Football League. Let's do this, guys. Come on. I'm not sure there's that many people that have turned up. Oh, we've got some more people in the, the flame pit over there, I think. Which one's the... I think the flame pit's that one. It's one of them. I haven't actually decided. Anyway, that's a nice purple from uh, Maidenhead. It's it's very purple, isn't it? Interesting. Here they come. That's uh, Asini heading away to Perry Webb, who, well, by the way, Aberdeen have been interested in. But they only wanted to give us... Let's wait for this. Alec McCann! Oh, that's why he's so important. That is why I needed him. What a player this guy is. Our best ever striker. He's Quality-wise, he is our best ever striker. And if he does stay at the club, if we're able to ever sign him permanently, I'd imagine he'd go on and be our all-time top goal scorer. At the moment, it's still a goo. But what I was saying about Perry Webb, Aberdeen were, were bidding £1,500 plus a few add-ons. And I just said no. I mean... I actually said 10, I originally said 100k, that's a bit, you know, over the top for, for someone of Perry Webb's quality, uh, especially going from this from this level, but I, I then said 10k, and they just weren't interested, and Perry Webb's a little bit upset with me, as that's a great ball from Massini to Alec McCann again, Alec McCann, he's done it again, what a player this is, what a finish, oh my, this guy is too good for this level, why have Ebbsfleet in League 2 not decided to keep this chap? What a ball from Asini as well. His weaker left foot. He's obviously improving that foot. That is a brilliant finish. Okay, guys. Maybe you want to, to, to change your prediction. Surely this, this crop won't be every game this season. Surely not. Here's Alec McCann again. Oh, he's murdering teams. Paul McCann 3-0. What is happening? What an assist from Alec McCann. Oh, my. He is like messy today. The two McCanns have got the goals for us. What is happening? I don't care. But what is happening? What a ball. And it's a good header from Paul McCann. The keeper just couldn't quite reach it. He got a touch to it. This is absolutely insane. Maidenhead haven't done anything. As that's headed just over the bar. What a ridiculous game. <laughs> How have we done this? I didn't actually look at the Maidenhead team to see what sort of players they have, did I? I mean, look at, let's, let's have a quick look. They're two strikers. Now, he's good. He's very good. And playing alongside much better rounded players than us. How This tactic, it's so direct, but it works, doesn't it? Wow, this is going well. I'm going to bring Perry Miles in for Raphael Godwin in the ball mid winning midfielder. Of course, remember, we swapped Awusu and Godwin around towards the end of last season. It worked a treat. Uh, I might bring off a Gu and bring on a, a midfielder towards the end of the game. But for now, I'm going to bring Elliot Averson on for Paul McCann. Give him his debut. They've still got 20 minutes to turn this around. Here's Pemberton. Their first attack of the game. It's blocked by a scene. He does well. And now he plays it into to Webb, who knocks it long for the pace of Alec McCann again. Here he goes on a hat-trick. And he gets it. He deserves it. Because what a game he has had. And this is quite a truly remarkable start to our National League Premier campaign. How has this happened? It's another just lump from Perry. It's a great pass, but their defence, why are they pushing so high up against Alec McCann? And a great finish. I don't even need to worry about bringing on another central. We might as well leave a go on, to be honest. Uh, Perry Webb, 9. Asini, 9. Alec McCann, 9.7. I'm actually going to bring, bring Dury on for his uh, debut for Asini, who's quite tired. Free kick. They're a bit overpowered. And that's curled into the hands of Okoro. We've just been so good. Here's Higgins. Knocking it long. For the pace of Alec McCann again. Here he goes. I'm so glad we got him back. This game would have been completely different without him, I think. Well, obviously. Scored a hat-trick and got an assist. And with 10 seconds to go, we've, we've not been threatened. They've had one half chance. How have we done this? Defensively solid. Averson and Donnelly. It's the new centre-back partnership, but... It's not about them today. It's all about Alec McCann. Hat-trick. That was special. Well, I couldn't have wished for a better start, could I? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. This team and this tactic could pull off miracles this season. Where were Maidenhead expected to finish? To be fair, they were expected to finish one place above us. And looking at their players that we did see, they've got some quality players. That's a bit of a worry, because how good are the other teams? Oh, let's put a dampener on things. No, it's not. 4-0 against a National League team. They they were at this level last season. They've got a very small team, to be fair. But they were at level at uh, this level last season. 
I think that's impressive. It doesn't matter that they're expected to finish one place above us. But I suppose the real test will be when we come up, up against these top six teams especially. We've got Eastley next. We're just going down the road. It's a very short trip. The shortest trip for us at this level is literally five, ten minute drive. I'm pumped for this season. I really am. Thank you for watching today's episode. Please leave a like if you enjoyed it. If you didn't enjoy it, I mean, who are you? Region Rovers 4, Maidenhead Nail, what a win. Alec McCann, hero, is going to lead us to glory. I'll see you very soon.